All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another MLB The Show 24 stream here on Twitch. I'm next JG Gen 24, and today we're going to be checking out the new Team Affinity programs. Yes, the, uh, well, there's a lot of new content actually. Uh, we'll start off in the new season season three XP reward path, since uh, since that's uh, since we're on that right now. And I'll tell you who the three three rewards are if you get through it. Uh, it is Stan Musial, looking at him, solid hitter. Kind of give him a, a, a good defense, too. So very solid left fielder for you to use. Plus a lefty bat. That's always a good sign. Whenever you have a lefty, that's always good. Um, you also have Pedro Martinez, so he makes his return. He's a starting pitcher for this one. I thought they had a season one Pedro Martinez, but maybe I'm thinking wrong. No, 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 they did. Or no, 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 you know what it was? It was his uh, Expos card from the team collections. That's what it was. So now he gets a season three XP reward path one that's a 99. You know, pretty, uh, pretty much... Solid pitcher. Let's see if he has outlier. He does. So his fastball is going to be probably 102 miles per hour, maybe 103. And then finally, the last one is Mick, uh, Mickey Mantle, the switch hitter. Uh, you know, all round solid, solid player, or not solid, great player. Uh, I just, you know, me personally, I don't think I've had success with him other than his gold card, I think from MLB The Show 21 or 22, one of those, one of those games that where he was the gold card, he was like the base level, or, or, or he was kind of like one of the early rewards to kind of get you going, and that card I had a lot of success with, but I don't know. I just, I guess I don't like his swing or anything. So I don't know if I would ever use uh, Mickey Mantle. He's definitely tempting. But I mean, solid all around. Got great speed, decent steal. You can, so you could definitely steal with him if you get all the way. Power hitter, particularly against righties, but against lefties, he could also really swing the bat. And along the way, you also have some bulk packs that you can pick up. You have the chase pack, which includes Soriano. Uh, well, that's the latest chase pack. You also have these base out of position players. So if you didn't, or not base, but some of them are rare rounds. Some of them are base rounds. So if you didn't pick up on those packs and you need to get Anthony Rizzo, hey, you got a pretty good shot right through the XP reward pack. You know that IRA picked up Johan Santana, and I think there was one, yeah, Noah Syndergaard already, so I'm just going to end up picking the other ones. So they're all there. There's also a captain's pack. You get to choose one. Show packs, stubs, fallen is a habit packs, a lot of profile icons. All that's coming, coming throughout the XP reward pack. Now, what do you say we go check out the Team Affinity programs? Because that's the big one. Obviously, we have six new ones. Unfortunately, whoever was suggesting that Joe Nathan should be the uh, Giants card, I hate to disappoint you, but he is not. It is actually Michael Yastrzemski from 2019. He is your... He is the uh, flashback finest uh, card, along with Mike Cameron with the Padres from 06. And I do remember that because I remember him being on the Padres with Mike Piazza, uh, Eric Gagne. Let's see, does he have outlier? He does. So another pitcher with an outlier. And then Kyle Freeland, there's no way he has outlier. 
In fact, he has no quirks at all. So I got to be honest, I, I think Kyle Freeland is probably the worst pick out of all these guys. No quirks. Uh, not not bad s stats, but, you know, just no quirks. And you could easily go with Eric Gagne. I, I have to think he's the worst, but... I mean, you have Michael Yastrzemski, or you have Dalton Varsho, lefty who can play catcher, not just an outfielder, but a catcher as well. He's got uh, he's got the quirk of fighter, so he can perform better in the ninth inning or later. So very clutch guy. You know, you could bring him in if you need a lefty bat. You could bring him in. Uh, what did Cameron have for quirks? Oh, he has a, he has like six here. Let's see, better on the road, better playing during the game, sells at hitting first pitch, so you can be aggressive with Mike Mike Cameron. Uh, very good at hitting breaking balls. Performs better when when team is behind. So rally monkey and then situational hitter. Less than two outs with a runner uh, from third. Okay, so another uh, clutch guy. All right, let's go check out the Mets or the uh, rewards for the NL East because you know I'm going to be interested in that outlighter. That's probably the first card that I'm taking. So overall, this guy, uh, outlighter, does not have a lot of um, – he does not have a lot of uh, velocity. Very uh, home – Home, uh, or, or I'm sorry, he's a uh, he's a off speed pitcher, for sure. But hey, I mean he has five pitches to select with, so that's good. And that curveball that could be really deceptive. So I'm I like that. Just looking at his quirks, he's better when he plays at home, and when he's playing at night, and when the team is behind. He's also a very good pickoff pitcher. So. You have a guy that's important because you can have, you can have him. You could throw him over, and you could probably get the opponent out. So I think that's what kind of makes him valuable is his pickoff thing, uh, his pickoff move. You know that way you could get some base runners. Overall, just looking at his attributes, I mean he's pretty, he's pretty solid. Again, not going to throw a ton of heat with him, but. You know, still pretty solid. Not going to walk a lot of guys. He's obviously very clutch. Has a lot of stamina. And you're going to, you you can expect opponents not to hit a lot off this guy, whether it be just singles or home runs. And he's going to strike out a lot. Or he's going to strike out a lot of guys, and I'm willing to bet it's going to be on that slider or that curveball. But just looking at the other ones, you have Craig Kimbrell for the Atlanta Braves. So he has he actually has outlier one and two. And I'm guessing his secondary pitch were, they're thinking the sinker. So that's actually very, very good. And better when the team is behind. So why? Th that's what I don't understand. Why would you give a closing pitcher the stopper role? That that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Or the stopper court. Because it, it just, it really doesn't make any sense. All right. Anyway, we also have Christian Yelich when he was on the Miami Marlins from 2016. He... Does better on the road uh, when playing day games. He definitely sees fastballs a lot better, and he excels at hitting pitches outside the strike zone. Um, there's a there uh, there's like a uh, in showdown. There's the uh, I forget the name of that of that um, perk. That's like that, the bad ball hitter. But that's good because if you, if you're 
if you're being aggressive, then at least someone like Yelich can give you those uh, can give you a better shot at hitting those pitches that your your pitcher or your opponent is throwing throwing at you. Um, doesn't I, I mean he's obviously going to hit well against righties, lefties. He's not bad. Um, definitely more than what I expected, but this is a 99 overall. Fielding stats pretty solid, so I can throw him in the field. He has great speed. That's great to see. I don't know if you're going to steal a lot with him, but at least he has good speed. And then uh, we already looked at Al Leiter, so let's take a look at Chase Utley. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Um, much like Yelich, right against righties. Uh, power against lefty, that's... That's not bad. Vision, very solid. Discipline, okay. So, yeah, you're, you could still check swings, but more, it's going to be more likely that, you, that you're that you going to get called out on them. Uh, solid second base. Fielding, not too much speed, but decent speed. Definitely not a base runner. So, let's see what his quirks are. Uh, plays better at home, plays better at night, excels at hitting the first pitch, so you can be aggressive with him on the first pitch. He hits fastballs very well. He excels at, uh, he, actually, he does both. Okay, that's great. So he's an all-around hitter, performs better in the ninth inning or later, excels at pinch hitting. So... Even if you just want to throw Chase Utley on the bench, you could even throw him in late in the game, and he would be a great pitch hitter. And then, much like uh, Cameron, he has situational hitting. So if you got a runner on third and you need to drive in a run, you could go to Chase Utley, and he'll he'll come through for you. And finally, the last one, it's Anthony Rendon. I mean, just a solid bat. That's pretty much what we expected. That's what he was known for. They definitely bumped up his fielding stats. <clears throat> Sorry. Don't expect to hit, uh, steal a lot of bags with him. So fielding stats are pretty solid. I think a lot more than what than what his than what it should be. Uh, obviously not going to steal a lot of bases with him. The only problem is he has no quirks. So, uh, I mean, you kind of get what you get here. I mean, to me, the way that I would go about this is obviously I'm taking lighter first. Then I think I would take Craig Kimbrell. Then Christian Yelich, Chase Utley, and Anthony Rendon. I think that's how I would go about it. Let's check out the AL East real quick. So we have Rafael Palmero. I didn't even know that he actually played for the Royals. That's interesting. Um, honestly, based on these attributes, I would I would be I would just put him at at um, DH. I wouldn't even have him at first. Like he's fine at first, but he's clearly a hitter. Just based on the stats that I'm looking at here. Um, ooh, he's got quite a bit. He's got like eight quirks, so that's good. Uh, better at home, better at playing at night. Um, first pitch, so you can be aggressive with him. He hits fastballs and breaking balls. Better when the team is behind. Better in the ninth inning or later. And situational hitting. So... Uh, kind of like uh, Chase Utley, essentially. Only Utley has better fielding. So, Palmero, DH at best. Uh, let's see, M Mike Napoli. I, I mean, I like that his secondary position is a catcher, so I like that. The vision is a little bit lower than I would like. Fielding stats are not bad. Um... They're obviously high enough. Higher than Palmero. Let's see if they have it. 
Okay, so he has seven quirks. He plays better at home, at night, first pitch. Okay, so the I think the interesting thing here is that they gave him the table setter quirk. So, you know, you can bat lead off with him and he'll and he'll be better he'll be a better hitter for it. So I think that's rather interesting, but other than that, pretty much the same as Palmero and Utley. I would I guess I would be okay with putting him at first. Certainly more confident in him than Palmero for sure. Uh, I don't know if I would put him in at catcher though, if the fielding if the fielding stats were much better, like in the nineties, then I would. But um He's in he's in the eighties and I just wouldn't trust him as as a catcher. All right, so next up is Andrew Miller. Uh, I have to assume that he's gonna have the outlier. What? He doesn't have outlier? Oh my god. That is insane. How could you not give Andrew Miller outlier? Oh my god, I think that's an injustice right there. Definitely makes him it looks like he's one of the more overrated uh relievers. Honestly, I'd rather use Gagne or or Kimbrell over over Miller. Like all Miller is good for is that you could bring him in against lefties. That's about it. But that's very disappointing to say uh, to see. Um, next you have Matt Moore. I mean, I'm not expecting too much from him. I'm certainly not expecting outlier. Uh, the walks are a little concerning, as is the velocity and the control. For someone, that's, that's really not good. Uh, and no quirks either, so... Yeah, I'm not feeling this Matt Moore card. I'm really not. Sean Green, final one in here. Um, I mean, solid hitter, solid power hitter. Contact against lefties is not too bad. Uh, fielding wise, could be better, but he is. But it's still solid. It still works. Uh, and base running. I mean, he has a lot of speed. He's definitely aggressive. The steal, maybe you could swipe a bag or two with him, but I think it would just be better just to have him on the base pass. Okay, so he only has uh, six quirks. Plays better at home, at night. God, a lot of these players are just performing better at home. Uh, also very aggressive. Excels at hitting the first pitch. Uh, excels at hitting fastballs, so, okay. Situational hitting, and then table setters. So, essentially, like Mike Napoli, although I think Napoli had the breaking pitches, uh, work. But, yeah, essentially, this is, this is Mike Napoli, a lefty version of Mike Napoli. I think if I'm going to approach this, uh, I would say either go with Mike Napoli or Sean Green first. Whichever one you don't go with first, choose them second. Then you could go with Andrew Miller. Uh, you could do Rafael Palmero and then Matt Moore. Those are That's the way I would go about it, at least for AL East. Uh, did I go about, uh, did I explain how I would go about the, uh, this? I don't think I did. Um, either way, Freeland would definitely be the last guy I choose. Uh, I think Gagne would probably be the first guy because of his outlier. Mike Cameron, he's got pretty good, pretty good quirks, so maybe he'd be like second. Marshall, I mean, I like the fact that he could play, he could play catcher, and you can have him, and you could throw him there and not worry too much about his fielding. 
his arm strength will definitely be a concern. So if you're hoping to throw out runners, I mean, if you're going to throw throw them beyond the plate, don't really expect – you really got to get some oomph behind it. But at least he can field, and at least he'll be accurate. But other than that, uh, late-inning guy – Let's see, Yastrzemski, better at home and better at hitting fastballs. Yeah, I think I would go, this is the way that I would go with it. Eric Gagne, Mike Cameron, Dal Dalton Varsho, Mike Yastrzemski, Kyle Freeman. That's the way I would go. All right, we're going to check out the AL Central now. I'm sorry that I'm not... Uh, getting into gameplay right now, but you know this is for a good a good read. Or, or I'm taking my time to check this out, and we are going to go, and we're going to have a plan. That that uh, ultimately what I'm doing right now is I'm laying out my plan. So we'll check out James McCann, former Met, that really never amounted to anything. It's a shame. Uh, you know, very solid catcher behind the plate. Not going to have any secondary position, so it's either catcher or DH. Uh, power, definitely. Vision, good. Let's see what his quirks are. No quirks. All right. So, okay. All right. Eddie Murray, I like the fact that he's a switch hitter. I would definitely not put him at first. Like, honestly, I'd rather put Paul Marrow at first over Eddie Murray. And that's that's really saying a lot. Let's see if he have any. He definitely has quirks. He's got eight of them. Um, solid hitter. Pinch hitter. So yeah, if anything, like I would definitely use him as a pinch hitter. If I need to break up and kind of get some something going, I could definitely use Murray. So he would be a bench bat. I like the fact that it's a road warrior and day player. You guys know that I play against the Rockies during the daytime, so that definitely helps. An aggressive hitter on the first pitch. So online, I think I would, I think I would use him as a bench bat. Um, but if I'm going up against the Rockies, like I would have him as a DH. All right, Gregory Soto, and I'm excited about this one because I feel like that Gregory Soto has that outlier. So overall, I think this is going to be, yeah, this is already a better version of Andrew Miller. So that's good to see. I'm glad that they got Gregory, Gregory Soto, the outlier, because if they didn't give it to him, I mean, this was going to be a bust in terms of team affinity for left-handed relievers. I mean, Andrew Miller, that's so disappointing. Not going to have a lot of control, though, so you better be accurate whether you're doing um, uh, pitch perfect or whatever it is, the um, pitch analog meter. You, you got to be perfect with him because he does lose control. And he's going to walk. Quite a bit of guys. Excuse me. All right. Let's see Josh Stalmont. Stalmont. Okay. Uh, does he have the outlier? It looks like he may. He not only has outlier one, he has outlier two. So the sinker is going to be his next best pitch. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Great. I'm happy about that for sure. Uh, did we look at his stats? Yeah, not, much like Soto, not a lot of control, so you better be careful when you do all the uh, all the pitching. You better be very accurate if you want to get guys out. But that's good to see that the two best relievers so far in Team Affinity are in the AL Central. And then finally, Justin Morneau. Uh, I could not think that there would be a guy who was – just as bad as Eddie Murray, but I just found them in Justin Morneau. Because I would not put him as a fielder. 
DH, absolutely. DH, yes. But he can't run either, so bear that in mind. Let's see what his quirks are. Yeah, essentially the same as Eddie Murray. He's just, Eddie Murray is at least a switch hitter. So if you want to play play the switch hitter game, I, I think Murray would be the choice over Justin Morneau. But he performs better at night, so whereas I think uh, Eddie Murray was better during the day. Yeah, so Morneau is much better at night. Okay, so if I had to go about this, um, I am definitely taking Soto and Josh Mount, or I'm sorry, jo uh, Stalmont. I would take them with my first two picks. I would definitely take them, probably Soto first, and then Stall Mount. And then I would go with James McCann, uh, Eddie Murray, and then Justin Morneau. That's how I would go. About it. So let's check out the NL Central. So hopefully we have some good choices here. We have Fergie Jenkins. Ooh, does he have... Um, Well, okay. Um, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself there. Uh, looking at these stats, I mean, you're not going to throw a lot of heat with him, but at least you're going to have more control. And you can definitely strike out a lot of guys. So better on the road, better during the day. I like that he has to pick off, pick off quirk. Because that's important. And then put your that's good, the break outlier, because you don't want you don't want him to be missing badly when he's tired. Uh especially that fork and curveball. That's gonna be key to getting guys out. So pretty solid, pretty solid for Fergie Jenkins. Uh next up is Joe Morgan. Obviously, this guy is a is someone that you would put in against righties. I would not put him against lefties, and I sure as heck would not put him with other lefties because that's just setting the matchup up for for your opponent to throw in a righty like or a lefty like Gregory Soto, and basically you're not going to be able to hit with Joe Morgan. Well, you can hit, but he's not going to hit for power. Um, a very solid second baseman. Not going to play any other positions. The accuracy is a little concerning to me because it's like if I make a mistake or if I, get, if I throw off the timing for the throw, then, you know, that ball is getting by the first baseman. But he is a, a solid base runner, too. So let's see what his quirks are. Yeah. Excels when hitting two strikes. I like that. You know, especially since I find myself in a lot of two-strike counts online. Definitely not a guy that you're going to bring. Well, he is a fighter. He does have the fighter perk. Um, What up, Dodger? How are you? I'm just going over some of uh, the Team Affinity programs, although I'm spending a lot of time on this. I'm about 30, 30 minutes in, and I haven't even done any gameplay yet. Um, homebody, day player. I mean, the unfaced is what really sells me on Joe Morgan. That's what That's what I really like. All right, now we'll check out uh, Richie Sexton here. So not not bad vision. Uh, Defense-wise, yeah, I'd certainly trust him more than Eddie Murray or Justin Morneau. That's for sure. He's not going to have a lot of speed. I, I mean, he's a first baseman. That's no surprise. Uh, definitely, definitely a power hitter. 
I could see the power hitting. I would not throw them in the outfield. I just wouldn't, especially the corner outfields where you're going to need that arm strength. I would not throw them there. Let's see if he has, does he have anything? He it's, he's a better fastball hitter. Better when they're behind. Uh, first pitch, you know, you could be aggressive with him. Okay, so overall, not bad. Not bad. Um, but I, he's either a first baseman or a DH. Certainly not an outfielder. Let's check out uh, Jason Bay. I mean, I'd like those fielding stats to be up a little bit more. Vision is not too bad. Very solid hitter. Has decent speed. I would not steal with him, but, you know, he has decent speed. Geez, there are a lot of players from Canada. Let's see. Uh, also a first pitch swinger. Night, night guy. Better at home. I mean, nothing really stands out in terms of Jason Bay from what I've seen otherwise. And here's the big one. Mark McGuire. Obviously, D.H., He's got to be DH. You know, I keep saying I don't think I've seen anyone worse than some of the guys in this program in terms of first base. And then I come across Mark McGuire. It's like, of course. Of course. Why do I even get ahead of myself with that? Ugh. Ugh. Excuse me. But obviously a power hitter. DH, more likely. Yeah, Grimace and the Mets going going on to the NLCS. I'm not going to lie, though, Bray. The further that they get in this playoff run, the more nervous I get about it. Yes, I did see that. Honestly, I thought your Tigers should have won that game. I, I mean, school, that makes a lot of sense. So that may help you guys. I think that's going to help you guys. But you know Cleveland, Cleveland in the first, in game one, scored seven runs. So you got to be careful on that. Uh, just looking here, excels as a pinch hitter. I think that's pretty funny. Uh, first pitch aggressive. A lot of these guys are just first pitch aggressive. I mean, I'm, I'm all for that because I'm very aggressive as a – player i'd like to swing a lot but i mean this is a lot you're, you're giving a ton of guys you know first pitch first pitch swinging and i don't know i i just i don't know how i feel about that you're they're also giving them a lot of pinch hitter uh picks or uh, picks uh, or Works as well. Uh, yeah, hits fastballs and breaking pitches. No surprise there. All right. Um, yeah, I'll be honest. Fergie would probably be the first guy that I would take. Um, then Joe Morgan, because I want that speed. Although I'll, he'd probably be a bench He'd probably be bench or, um, you know, like a – just somewhere where there's not a lot of lefties. Somewhere in that one. Uh, let's see. Jason Bay is not too bad. And then, yeah, I would say Richie Sexton, finally Mark McGuire. Yeah, that's the way I would go. Fergie Jenkins, Joe Morgan, Jason Bay. Richie Sexton and Mark McGuire. That's how I would tackle that. And then one more, and then I promise we are finally going to get to some gameplay. The AL West, starting off with George Springer. You guys know I, I in the past, I've hit well with George Springer. So this is definitely a promising sign to me. Uh, solid fielder, center fielder, good. Has good speed, but can't really steal. So that's kind of disappointing. 
Uh, really only te two perks? Wow. Or, I'm sorry, not perks, quirks. Sorry, I keep thinking back to the showdown and how those are the perks, but these are the quirks. So two is not really, it's not really enticing to me. Still, I mean, breaking ball hitter, good. Bad ball hitter, so you can, even if you chase, at least you have a better chance, at least you have a decent chance of it becoming something. So, pretty solid from George Springer. Let's see Troy Gloss. A solid hitter, solid fielder. Not too bad of a base runner. Obviously could be quicker, but you can still use him on the base paths, and you could stretch it if you need to. Uh, yep. I like the table setter. I do like that. He do, He's a fastball hitter for sure. A fastball hitter. The other thing too about him being him him being a solid fielder is that you could actually throw him at short. I mean, I'd be a little concerned about the accuracy because that's gonna go down in a secondary position. But still, it's not like fielding wise, he's he's terrible. Like he would still be up in the eighties, as was Armstrong. And his reaction, I would bet, is like right at 80, if not near 80. So, okay, another solid, another solid addition. Uh, Dennis Eckersley, he's obviously not going to have outlier. But I do like that he has pick off. He, he's good at picking people off. He's good on the road, good at night. And unfortunately, that doesn't look like a lot of control. Oh, it's velocity. Oh, it's velocity. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, not bad. I mean, there's a much better reliever that I would take. But... All right. So James Paxton, I don't think he's going to have outlier. But at least he can go ways. And... Control, it's it's pretty solid. Control is pretty solid. Velocity, it's not bad. But he has no quirks. Uh, still, I think he's better than Matt Moore, for sure. And then finally, you have Joey Gallo. I mean, no vision, but you, you get... Uh, I think it's interesting they put him at third base. And they gave him... Wow, some defense. Wow. That is some defense. Holy mackerel. But no quirks. So, yeah, I, I think the way that I would go about it, um, probably go with Springer first, then Troy Gloss. I would just go down the line, honestly. Springer, Gloss, Eckersley, Paxson, and Gallo. That's how I would go about it. All right, guys. So those are the team affinity programs. We all have. Uh, I have my plan in place to be able to grab them. Hold on, I just got to take care of that real quick. And you guys know that I am due, or I need to finish up a conquest map that I was doing. Oh, wait. Actually, I, I did want to see one thing. Hold on. Got NL. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Okay, so now there's only one moment. There's only one, and you have uh, uh, for, at least for the NL East. Let's see if it's the same. Yeah, same for the AL, AL East. They now have team-based missions, and not repeatable. They are not repeatable. Ooh, a hundred total bases. Okay, so is this like, is this like the um, what? Is this is this like, yeah, it's like this. 
Although, at least they gave more for the total bases and the runs. At least they gave more for those. Because I, I think you saw with with these. Oh no! Actually, they didn't give as much, or they uh, this one or this mission would be the same. But this one, they actually gave more parallel XP or team affinity uh, program XP. And for this one, they clearly just went with 50,000. So. All right. Uh, yeah, you have the showdown. You have you have conquest. They're all pretty much the same. It's all going to be strikeouts, runs, and total uh, or total bases. Not to mention the hits with, or not to mention the hits with, or wow, the stat missions with the bosses. And then of course you have these missions as well. So if you're into the online, um, if you're into online, well then you got this here. But if you're not, I mean, there's also the parallel XPs. So at least you have those. All right. Well, now that I'm done talking about it, how about I get to that conquest map? Or back to the wild card uh, conquest map. I think that's about as far as I'm going to go because I want to be able to steal or I want to be able to get that stronghold from the Mets. All right, let's do it. Setting up you, Darvish. Oh. See, the great thing about having advanced already is that I don't have to worry about playing about games today. I just I can sit back and relax with um and enjoy the playoffs and we're just and just wait to see what happens on Sunday. That's the beauty of advancing. Right in front of the warning track. Okay. Just got underneath it. Got underneath that one too. Oh, j it further, further than what Larkin hit it at. Oh man, if I was just on it more, that would have been gone. I mean, so overall, there are some solid guys that are in the team affinity for sure. Uh, but there are just some where it's kind of like a head scratcher. It's like, wow. Ah, dang it. Glad to see they still haven't fixed this. So, we'll see what happens Sunday. I mean, like I was saying before, the further it goes on, the more nervous I'm, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm with in terms because it's like now I do want the World Series. Now I want the Mets to win it all, and I think they have the capability to be able to do it. But 
now I just fear that heartbreak that the closer they get, the harder it is going to be to accept it. Like, accept the fact that if they do, if they do not win it all, it's just going to be that much harder. You know, I, I'm just fearful as to what repeating 2015. That's my biggest concern. I don't want to see a repeat of 2015. I actually want to see this team winning. Two balls, two strikes. Strike three, sit down. Lindor, Alonso, and Alvarez. Uh, Lindor hits better against lefties, although he's pretty solid against righties as well. Um, yeah, just go warm up Chris Martin. Attaboy, Higa Shioka. Does that like make sense that you know I, the more the further they get, the more nervous that they uh, that I get about a potential heartbreak? It's like you made it so far, and honestly, you know, my coworker was who's a Yankees fan, mind you, was trying to remind me that hey, you know. The Mets were not expected to get this far. And that's true. They weren't. In fact, a lot of people, myself included, wrote them off so many times this year. It, it, it has been a fun season. It really has. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that the heartbreak of being so close and not achieving it, that's what I feel. I don't want to fear that. I want to believe that the Mets are going to win it all. But I, I guess I just, I think back to 2015 oh, where they really should have had it then. But they ran up against a Royals team that was fundamentally better. And it's not like the Mets are not beatable. Of course they're beatable. I mean, the Phillies proved that. I think what just makes this team dangerous is that you can never count them out until the 27th out. Or the 24th. Actually, not the 24th. Uh, you know. Yeah, 24th if, uh, if uh, they're down. But either way, you can't count them out. So, I, I think that definitely... Uh, go ahead. Yeah. I should live with that. I should. At a boy, Biggio. Now, so overall, I'm not. It's just 2015 was just so heartbreaking for me, and I just don't want to go through that again. Like I really want to see this team win. I do think they have a good shot at doing it. I do believe that. But, you know, there there is always that, that concern that they won't do it. All right, let's get Chris Martin in here. Martin. 0-1. 
I just don't know what I would do. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, they they do win it. I mean, I don't know what would happen. I feel like I would just be so emotional. Unfortunately, now that sets the standard high. Now they got a... <laughs> now it's like, okay, now you got one World Series. Why can't you get another? Why can't this be a dynasty? And a dynasty is very hard to do these days in baseball. It is very hard to have a dynasty in baseball. I mean, the last one I think we can... Tr well... I would say the Astros have been the closest. They did win. 2017 was controversial. But 2022, no doubt, they deserved it. And ever since then, they they had... They had... Um, they've been in the playoffs. They were always a playoff, playoff contender. Who do I think is going to move on tonight? Oh, God. I mean... Going back on the experience of 2015, you know, normally a lot of people would say that getting getting Game 5 or a, a series clinching game at your, home, at your home stadium is usually an advantage. But then I think back to 2015 when the Mets beat the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium in Game 5 of the NLDS. And I think back to that and say, well, that was a case of home field advantage doesn't mean jack. I, I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Dodger, but I think the Padres are just that team. They're too hot, one and one. especially Tatis. So I, I think I got to give it to the Padres, which is not what I want because I'd rather go up against the Dodgers than than the uh, Padres. But I, I think the Padres are just the better team. All around. Like, pitching is not an issue for them. Uh, batting is not an issue for them. Base running is not an issue. There's not too many weaknesses that the San Diego Padres have. Uh-oh. Yeah, I had to swing at that. I'm glad that I did, though, because... That was clearly a home run. I, I had to swing. I had to take Larkin away from his... Or I had to t keep Larkin from stealing. He got a bad jump. So, yeah. I'm going to say... I'm going to say the Padres. I don't want to, but... It is what it is. I just hope that Dodger Dodger fans are very respectful uh, in this game tonight. Like, obviously, what I saw, I think in Game Two or either game, I think it was either Game One or Game Two. One of those it, that was disrespectful. So I, I hope I don't see any more of that tonight. I don't think I will, but. You know, we'll see. Ah. Well, that's all right. It's not really... Um... Not really trying to do anything here. Oh, that's off 
By the way, um, I know I teased the Grimace costume reward thing, and that is coming up, but uh, I have to go get it dry cleaned first, all right? I wore that thing for six hours on Tuesday. That that thing needs to go to the dry cleaners. So if anything, maybe it'll be ready by, um, by Monday or Tuesday. We'll see. But for the week, for the weekend, it's not going to be here. It's going to be at the dry cleaners. Oh wait, did I not? Oh yeah, I did. I did. I get. I got Brooks really. Brooks really a bit more. Good. About that, I trust him. Strike three, sit down. And if the Dodgers do move on, I do hope that they that they are respectful. We'll see what happens. But. I don't think Met fans are going to give any problems to the Padres or whoever. I think I think for the most part Met fans are very respectful. I mean I haven't I haven't seen anyone of like Phillies fan or, or towards Phillies fans, yeah we were messing around with a few. But I wouldn't say that we um that we were like disrespectful in any way. We were just messing around. Plus, I mean, I had a bad experience with a Phillies fan who, for some reason, decided to flip me off and curse me out at the, at the game that I was at. I don't know why. Uh, well, I know why. It's because I was wearing the Grimace costume. But even still, like, it wasn't like I provoked him into saying, into flipping me off or cursing me out. It's not like I went up to him and said, oh, Philly stank or anything like that. Like, no. No, I was respectful. He just, he just looked at me and decided I'm going to, he was drunk. I could tell that he was drunk. But still, that's no excuse to to be flipping someone off and cursing them out. Leading off for Long Island, the shortstop, Barry Larkin. Had a boy Larkin. That's all I'm saying is that I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that either, that if the Dodgers do make it, that their fans are respectful to the Mets. It, it, I, I know that the Mets have had postseason success against the Dodgers in the past, but we're not, it's not like we're trying to rub it in. We're just, we're just having a good team right now. And Padres, I mean, I think there is some resentment there. For 2022, but I don't think that Met fans would just go to Padres and just be all disrespectful. To them. Yeah, I mean, if anyone is even thinking that, then or any Mets fan who's thinking that way, I would advise them not to do that. Okay. Do not to any Mets fan who's thinking about being disrespectful towards the Padres or their fans. I say think twice about that because this is not about 2022. This is about this year. Yep, that ball went out. 
And right now, the Padres and the Mets are two of the hottest teams in the playoffs right now. What's up, gamer? Oh, were you the one who was asking about Joe Nathan being the Giants uh, throwback? Hard? Was that you or was that someone else? I can't, I can't remember. But anyway, what? what what's going on? David Wright, holy heck, dang, that nearly reached the slide. I was the person that discovered Justin Morneau first. Interesting. He's actually the last card that I'm going with in that team affinity. He's the last card. I, I'm I'm actually, a who, I was either going to go with in the... AL Central, I was actually going to go with uh, Soto and Stalmont. Those are the two guys that I would go with for my first two picks. Morneau would actually be the last one. Going for the Royals guy. Last, who's that guy? That guy? He, gamer. He's got, he's got outlier one and two. His, his fastball is going to be 102 or 103 and his sinker is going to be like 99. I do recall him from 2020 having a very solid um, or solid uh, having some solid outings out of the head. I do recall that. I know. Actually, what I'm sad about, they didn't give Miller outlier. Like, I, I'm kind of like, what? Honestly, Soto is much better than Miller, in my opinion. Never? Seemed like he always threw so hard. Like, always thought he had outlier. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll be in like a headliners pack or maybe a uh, chase pack or something like that. Nope. But I figured it was you that that said you wanted Joe Nathan in Team Affinity. Would Joe Nathan have the outlier or no? Why why would they gotta be drunk? I mean I don't know, maybe they're done with chase packs for this year. Because they're on set 15, and I mean, there might be there might be one more coming for when they do the finest. Because I'm assuming that chapter three is going to be the is going to be the 2024 finest. Ah.
Well, I didn't think they would put David Wright behind a chase pack, but they did. And I didn't think that was... There is no chapter three. Oh, okay. I knew it! I knew I didn't get anyone up in warming! Gosh darn it! Oh, I think I got away with that one. I see. Yeah, that's also when the, uh... That's also when the extreme program is coming out. Next Friday. Oh boy, that means we're going to have to we're going to have to hustle. We want to get Mantle, Pedro and Winneman. On the 18th of November. On the 18th of November is what you're talking about, correct? Now, if anything, they're gonna they're, they gotta have like a really good card for um, they're gonna have to have really good cards for the extreme program. I don't think we've have we did get ninety nine Griffey. We did get ninety nine Griffey. Um, got Frank Thomas. We already have Babe Ruth. <laughs> twenty twenty one. Trey Turner, finest Trey Turner. <laughs> Uh I mean they haven't done a 99 Mike Piazza yet and they did have him as part of the extreme program last year. There we also don't have a 99 Billy Wagner I don't think. They better not just recycle the players that they gave us from last year because that would just be dumb. Yeah. Oh, we do have a 99 Wagner? Which one was that? Because I don't remember off the top of my head. I must have missed it. Oh. I got a ball, one strike. 99 miles. Astros? Was he with the Astros? Or was he... He wasn't a Met. Because I would have had him as a Met. And I don't... It's, it's, so it's either... Oh, wow. Hank Aaron had so much power. He was in a path. Hank Aaron has so much power, even with contact swinging, I was able to hit it out. How great they made. See, I, I do like the George Springer card. I do. 
I've hit well with his card in the past. So that's why I'm excited to get that one. In fact, uh, basically how they lined it up, if you look at the cards, it, you know, when you do triangle to... Um, when you do triangle for them, uh, the way that they lined it up is exactly how I'm going to pick them. <laughs> hey, beggars cannot be choosers. But I definitely agree. The Springer card, to me, is the best card in the AL West Team Affinity uh, program. So I do agree on that. I will say, though, I'm very disappointed with how they treated uh, the, the lefties, the starting left-handed pitchers. You know, Matt Moore and Kyle Freeland, oh, my God, they're awful. They're like the last cards I would pick. <laughs> well, I like Varsho because he's he plays secondary. Um, he plays a uh, catcher as a secondary, so you could have him there. I do like that. And his fielding, even if you... Um, his fielding is actually so good that you can have him there. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, gamer, but he's terrible. I don't like his card at all. I, I mean, look at this. Look at this. No velocity. No control. His walks is barely above 85. And no quirks. I'm sorry, but this is a bad... Uh, this is not a great card. And the same thing with Freeland. No velocity, no control. At least he has a higher strikeout per nine rating, but no quirks. I'm sorry. I just, I don't like Matt Moore. Like, Freeland is better because he has a higher strikeout, strikeout rating. But they both don't have any control, and neither one of them has any quirks. I mean, you could have done Trevor Story. You could have done... Actually, Trevor Story was career tribute, I think. No, no, he wasn't. It was... Uh... Hold on. Yeah, and they already did Larry Walker and Todd Help. They already did 99s of them. You could have done 99. What about 99? Uh, what about 99 Nolan Arenado? I don't see. Uh, I don't see the other Todd Help. I only see I only see the one here. I don't see a second Todd Help. Oh, I see Arenado got the ninety eight uh, out of position player. That's right. Where? Oh, I see. I see now. 
Okay. Um, they already gave 99 Herman Marquez. Or they gave Herman Marquez a 99. Um, and what about Troy Tulwitzki? But I guess they don't have the rights to him either. Troy Tulwitzki. Yeah, they don't have the rights to Troy. Otherwise, they would have already picked him. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's immediately where my thought went to. But see, I think 99 Ryan McMahon is coming for Finest. If it's not him, um, I'm not sure they're going to give it to Brenton Doyle since he already has a 99. That or they're going to give it to Nolan Jones. For finest. But Nolan Jones uh, is too young, whereas McMahon, you could go back to to um, 20, you, you could go back, I, I think, to 21 or 22, and you could give him a 99. All right. Uh, let me go back to, let me go back to conquests here. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. That's what I meant. To do. All right. So now I'm going to go over here. Try to get as far as we can. Uh, and unfortunately, that that uh, nine the territory is gonna yep exactly what I thought they would do. Ah, uh, but at least I got them down to two, so that's more manageable than. Uh, that's more manageable than, you know, eight or nine. God forbid. Somehow I'm playing on All-Star against the Orioles. I don't know how, but I am. Give me you, Darvish, again. Long Island, the Georgia Barrier, Larkin. Go foul, go foul, big go foul. Just in land foul, and in someone's glove. Not the someone I wanted the the glove, uh, the ball to land into, or not. Not the glove of someone that I was hoping it would be. Oh yeah, are there any collections like for Retro Finest? I didn't check to see if there were if there was anything like that available. And I feel like I missed I may have missed it. Or it, and maybe one is coming out later. Nope. I definitely think you could do a flashback uh, of 
a Flashback Finest collection. There's definitely a number of them that have been released over over the season. How about how about Francisco Lindor being named finalist for the for the Hank Aaron Award? That's pretty cool. Although I don't think he's gonna get it. I think um, if anything, if anything, for, uh, Shohei Otani deserves it. But see, my thing is. And some Mets fan actually make this point, and I actually agree with them. Uh, to me, the Dodgers would still be the Dodgers even with, uh, without Otani. Like, Otani, don't get me wrong, he had an MVP season for sure. But he played as a, a bite. Would the Dodgers still have, you know, made the playoffs without him? Yeah, they would have. Whereas Francisco Lindor, Mets don't make the playoffs without him. He was a true MVP for this team, a true key factor. And I think that's what these voters should think about when they when they go ahead and vote. I know it's easy to look at stats and say, ooh, 50-50 season, never been done before. Go ahead and give it to Shohei Otani. And I, and, and I would agree. But... You know, Lindor really made a difference for his team. He really did. And I hope that the voters recognize that. I think he's going to finish runner-up at the very least if they do decide to give uh, Otani the the MVP award. But I really do think that, that Lindor should get it. Yes, he didn't have a great first half of the season, but, you know, how, how much of that can you really blame on him like you know he he wasn't hitting he wasn't always hitting leadoff he wasn't always he was batting like third or second in the in the order so and that's really on Mendoza Where uh, I'm willing to bet that if the Mets had bat Lindor leadoff they would have won a few more games and I don't think there would have been any question they'd be competing for the division. They would have competed for the division. I mean, the bullpen was still the bullpen, but you don't go to the bullpen if you have a lot more offense. And I think Lindor provides that. So, in my mind... Lindor was definitely an MB uh, was definitely the MVP. He really made a difference for his team. Whereas Otani, the stats are what are what really tell the story. And to me, an MVP is someone who actually leads their team to success, you know? And I think Lindor has done that. It hasn't been all beds and roses. You know, there were definitely struggles, but this is by far one of the biggest comebacks a, a, a team has ever uh, ha ever had. I mean, 11 games under 500. The only, the only story that was better than this was the Washington Nationals 2019 have the worst April in the in MLB history and come back to win the World Series. That's the only better story that I can think of personally. So I do hope that the voters considered that when they decided to vote for MVP. But I think because Otani is the bigger name and because he had such a historic season, he's going to get it. Oh, gosh. If only Otani wasn't in the National League. Well, 
One ball, no strike. So we'll see what happens. If Lindor does get the MVP, I'll be shocked. I'll be excited for him, but I'll be shocked. Nice. I needed to do that. I need to get base runners. Or I need to get base runners in scoring position. So, I, I think Otani does deserve the Hank Aaron Award. But if we're going to give that award to him, then I feel like Lindor should get the MVP. Now see, good thing I did. Good thing I did steal with um, Quan there, because that ultimately prevented a double play. Still have two outs, so I still gotta get this runner in. But at least, at least it's not an inning-ending double play. One ball, one strike. Um, it, it, look. Either way, this run that both Otani and Lindor have been on has been truly amazing. I mean, the fact that Otani had to do had to have a 50-50 season is truly amazing. And the fact that Lindor is even getting into the MVP conversation with with the year that he's had, that's also amazing. Ah. All right, so I got to bring in Chris Martin and hope that I can force extras. Like I said, I fully expect Otani to get it, but someone made the argument that Lindor really helped the Mets win, and they needed to win in order to get into the playoffs. I mean, yeah, the Dodgers had to do that too, but I feel like that Dodgers lineup is so stacked that they got contributions from everyone that Otani was, it's purely stats. Whereas Lindor... Lindor really did lead his team to victory. Did lead his team on this amazing run. Gosh, if only they could factor in the playoffs, then I think that would make, I, I think that would put Lindor, give the edge to Lindor. I really do. But unfortunately, postseason does not count for any no, anything. Except for, you know, getting that World Series. That's it. I don't, I don't think it was so much as a choke by the Phillies as much as it was that the Mets were just gelling. Like, they were... I, I, I have to agree with what the, what the um, Philly players were saying. It wasn't a choke job. They just ran into a better team. The Mets were hot. I mean, they beat, they beat the Phillies in so many different ways. Yeah, they had the home runs, but you also think back to game one where Wheeler dominated them. And yet they stuck around and they just played small ball after that. They got to their post, they got to the bullpen, played small ball, then got the runs they needed in to be able to win game one. And even in game three, yeah, they had the home run by the home runs by Pete Alonso and Jesse Winker. 
But even after that, uh, well, those two runs would have just counted for a tie. The Mets then had to play small ball and get their get their players into position to score. And even that game four, where Lindor hit the home run, yeah, that was that ultimately put the Mets ahead. But he easily could just hit a fly ball to the outfield, and that would have tied the game at the very least. So I don't think it was a choke job so much as they just ran into a Mets team that was that was just better. Or was just better in that series. I don't think the Phillies choked. I think the Mets were just better. But that also goes back to, you know, the Mets playing in the wild card round. They won game one, they lost game two, and game three they were on the verge of elimination, and they came back where Pete Alonso hit that game, that three run homer to give the Mets the lead in the ninth inning. Now that I believe was a choke job. That I would say is a choke yeah. job, particularly by Devin Williams. But what the Phillies did? No, that's not a choke job. That was running into a team like the Mets with solid pitching, had solid batting, fielding. Everything about that team was just, about this team was just yelling. And, and my friend also made a good point about the Mets. The, com the camaraderie that is part of this team is really making a difference. You know, you can have the best players on the on a single team, but it's not going to make a difference if you don't have them working together. If they if you have a if you have the best players in the world on your team and they're all ego, you're not going to win a lot of games and I think the Mets recognize that from 2023. You know, Scherzer Verlander, there were just so many egos. Nope. Whereas here, there are no egos. Everyone, as far as I know, no one's been like, no one's been all oh high and mighty. Like even Lindor's not all high and mighty. He's actually very humble. Glad we were able to close that out. Sucks that we couldn't get the win for you, Darvish. But uh, it is what it is. Oh. All right, next up, the Royals. This is me as a Mets fan saying that the that the um, the Phillies didn't choke. Okay, it was not a choke job. At least I don't believe it was a choke job. That was a solid team. I mean, even as Mets fans, we recognize that. I mean, you going up against Schwarber, Turner, Harper. Castellanos, Real Muto, you know, top of the, the first half of the lineup right there. Dangerous. 
absolutely dangerous. And that starting rotation, oh my gosh. Those are a bunch of Cy Young Award candidates. Wheeler, uh -oh, Nola, Suarez, Sanchez. I mean, that's no easy task. And yeah, the bullpen, the bullpen did not, the bullpen was the main downfall of the Phillies. Yeah, I'll give you that. But still, that is a very solid bullpen. You want to use Pedro, but you don't know who to replace? What are your, who are your uh, starters? Randy Johnson, Todd Helton, Anthony Rizzo, you Darvish, Jose Barrios. I would take out Barrios. I mean, that's essentially... Uh, he, uh, Pedro is much better than Barrios. I believe. Barrios, I think, has a lower home run per nine rating. I think Barrios is at like 69 or something like that. I don't know if you've super fractured him, but... You know that's that's kind of what I I I thought because I think I had Barrios in my in my rotation too. Oh wait, no, 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 no! You know who I'm thinking of? You know who I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of uh, Byron Buxton for the Twins. That's who I'm thinking. Strike three, sit out. I'm sorry, you said Jose Barrios and. I don't know why I thought about the Twins. He's, uh, I think he's a Blue Jay. Did you see Tim Anderson has 55 discipline on his... Ooh, that's rough. All right, then. You know you guys swing with him. Wow, that may be one of the best swings I've had all game, and you're telling me it's warning track power? Come on. me maybe he should have been the flashback for uh, the flashback finest for the Royals instead of Stalmont or Stalmont excuse me I think it's Stalm not Stalm Stalm really I really think I gotta turn off the CC just, it's getting too cold. But then I have nothing for noise. You know what's funny is that the game is the game in that in that at bat with Pete Alonso pitched him exactly like how the Phillies were pitching Alonso. High fastballs, and then would come in on him. Dan all for uh, best first baseman. I'd rather have him in the outfield. That's just me personally, but I'd rather have him there. Yeah, I think I'm going to turn off my AC. Just too cold. Too cold. 
you Darvish. Strike three, sit down. Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh, how did he miss the home run? Wow. Wow. Paul DeYoung just missed it. I lucked out there. I wish I could see that replay. Dude, God bless him. Mark Vientos with the home run. Oh, wow. Still got the one run, thanks to Mark Vientos. So now we're going to put in Mariano Rivera. Hopefully he'll close this out. Strike three, sit out. We're on double XP this weekend, aren't we? Strike three, sit out. No, we can't be. Oh, we are. Oh, okay. Oh, then, you, then I guess that makes sense, then. And Mariano Rivera is up to tier three. Very nice. Brutal. Someone already has Pedro. Well, Stan Musial is 52,500, so that's no surprise. If someone is, if, remember, the I think they quadrupled the, uh, when they do double XP, they quadruple the, um, they quadruple the daily limit. I can't believe someone already has Pedro Martinez, because that's 140,000. There's no way anyone has, uh, has Mickey Mantle. If someone has Mickey Mantle, like, th that has to be a record. Garrick, I see. Soriano, where is... I guess... Weird that they wouldn't put him in the Yankees collection. 
Very weird. Hmm. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to look at... I knew it! I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I knew they had to have a, uh, a finest collection. I, I already have a ton of them, so... I yeah, so I'm going to get the wild card sign. Woohoo. Really hoping that I could have gotten one of these guys, but I mean, god damn, Mike Trout, Cody Bellinger, Brian Dozier, that's a real flashback. Mike Messina, Rob Dibble, oh, he's back. Rob Dibble is back. Oh, boy. Wild card slide is Isles. Not as good as his, his finest last year. Well, his finest last year was just outrageous. That was like a card on its own. Let's see. Was it... Okay, so... Bat Fielding-wise, I mean... You could play some anywhere, and, uh, and he would still be a solid fielder. The arm accuracy, but if you're going to play him in uh, in the outfield, that may not matter as much. And if you play him at first, it's definitely not going to matter. I like the unfazed. I do like that. A bad, a bad ball hitter. I like that as well. Hits better against breaking pitches. I would hope more for fastballs. And table setter as well, so... He would be great to have lead off an inning. I don't know. That looks like a pretty solid card to me. Oops. Wait, I did do those. What? Yeah, because here were the... Um, I did do that. What the heck? The Mets were the six. Brewers were the three. Then you had the Braves and the um, Padres down here. I got that done. What the heck? I think the game is glitching me out. That's not good. Anyone else having that problem? Someone do the, uh, if someone's already done the conquest map, please, please go to it and see if they credited you with the, um, with getting the Padres and Brave Stronghold. Because I think I'm being gypped. Yep, that's exactly what I thought they would do. Dang.
Nope. We'll go after the tigers. But not with that many. Not with that many fans. Alright. Go back to you, Darvish. And I kind of hate that this entire map I've been playing on All-Star. Like, can't I play on Veteran? Leading off for the line, the Joker, Barry Larkin. Hey! I, I will be live on Sunday because I was not, I did not do a stream on Tuesday, so. Yeah. Wait, everyone's getting John Donaldson? They released the ranked seasons thing or the stat missions? I thought they were doing that later. Oh, oh well, but I may want to get on that. That's all right. Dominguez did what he needed to do. And David Wright did exactly what I needed him to do. And there we go. That's what the Mets are going to have to do in order to move on. They got to be able to to be to situational hitting and and be smart. We're going to have to, uh, with runners on base and in scoring position. Ah. Uh. Oh, well. That's all right. You still don't like right swing? I mean, I've been hitting nothing but nukes with him. So, I guess I like his swing. Strike three, sit down. Seems like I keep going to uh, you, Darvish, a lot. Like, he's just a solid pitcher. Actually, now that we, now that I know that about ranked seasons, now that I know that, 
Um, you know, now I have something to grind for Sunday. So thank you for alerting me to that, gamer. Because now that I know that, I'm going to be grinding ranked seasons. I was just waiting on the second stat missions to pop up in order to start grinding. So you literally just gave me something to do for Sunday. One ball, one strike. Thank you. Of course, I'm not going to have the finest... Uh, I'm not going to have the finest cards on my team. You know, I'm only going to have very few. I'm going to have very few. Right. And all that, but I still think I have a pretty solid squad. Now, Number four. Oh. A boy beat. Or should I risk it? Yeah, I'm going for it. And we're safe. Beat Alonzo with an RBI double. He goes Shioka scoring. Now can Mark Vientos drive in Pete Alonzo? He can. Hey, I contact swung on that. I'm, bat I'm batting a uh, crisp bug. Yeesh. I would not put him in the in your um in your lineup then or I would not Well, okay. Here's the thing about conquest, alright? Here's the thing about it. You only get so many at bats with a player unless you're unless you um you only get like one at bat, maybe two if you have an, a game like I'm having right now. So I don't think conquest is a fair assertion of what a player's um stats are. I guarantee you, if you go into play versus CPU against the Rockies or something like that, then I think you uh, you have a different story with more no. like my stats right now with David Wright well they're inflated because I've been using him in this in this lineup and I've been batting at Coors Field where he's had a lot of home runs Although there, he didn't really, he didn't justify the stats. <laughs> well, I got to keep you Darvish in because the save is completely out of the question right now. Sorry, bummer. Would have thrown you in if you had, uh, I hadn't scored two extra runs. I don't know what you're going to do about contact swinging and getting and Stephen Kwan driving in two runs. And I sure as heck don't know what you're going to do about having a player get, an, get a double and advancing the runner to third on a, on a 
contact swing to the warning track. I don't even know how that's possible. My hope is to at least finish up this map today so that I can I can move on to well, I'm not gonna be able to finish up this map because that one mission about getting the uh, the Braves and Padres is done. I have to redo that. Otherwise, I'm missing out on. Um, I'm missing out on two million airplanes. Hold on. I got to, uh... Now back, the first race is Pete Alonso. Yeah, bought some people. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, I know, right? On one. I think that's MLB The Show, like, showing some, uh some sympathy for him, although I personally don't know why. If someone has a bad year, they should be they should uh, they should be rated lower. And Kershaw was not having a great year. Now that the second base is Craig Fugio. Let's get uh, Felix Bautista now, in here Felix. so that we have a fresh arm. One -oh. Ball in. I mean, if anything, I feel like Kershaw should just retire. Three you know, no. he's had a great career. 20 yeah. years or 19, I, I think 18 18 or 19 seasons in the MLB. You know, these days, that's very hard to come by. Yeah, you have Scherzer, Verlander, and um, Kershaw. Well, also Rich Hill, but Rich Hill didn't do it at the level that um, Verlander, Scherzer, and DeGro or, or uh, the, uh, the other three guys have done. Like, Hill's just been... Kind of a journey, man. Strike three, sit down, by the way. That last strikeout. All right. Great job there. We have the Tiger Stronghold, and all that's left is the Houston Astros. Pete Alonso goes up to Tier 1. And now we just go after the Strongholds with multiple fans on them, like 
or not strongholds, territory, excuse me. Well, there you go. There's a challenge. But you do have runners on, right? It's runners on. If it's no runners on, then that's not that's not veteran. That's freaking all star right there. Oh. Oy. Yeah, that's going to be a hard one for sure. Good luck. Yeah, I have a feeling that's going to be the running theme here. Oh, you got 28 outs? All right, so you got a little time. I can claim one more territory. All right. This is your favorite man, Matt Moore. So then you just got to build a lineup full of uh, righties, and then you should be good. Wow, really? Can I still play on? No, you know what? No, I'm going to skip it. And I'm gonna play I'm gonna play on veteran. I wanna play on veteran. But this will likely be my last game of the of the of the stream. So I'll finish up the map and then and then I'll get ready for work and then see you guys all on Sunday. Where the ranked season grind will begin. Had a boy, had a boy Larkin. Nope. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Dang! How long? How? How long do I have that ring? Please. Oh. Oh, he's safe. <laughs> Especially since Palmero, he doesn't really have all that much power against righty or lefties. Darn it! Uh, fraud. Ball outside. Ball. Two balls, no strike. Strike three, sit out. Strike three, sit out. Should have mental this weekend. But yeah. Yeah, you absolutely should. Maybe that's how someone already got Pedro. They just had a bunch of programs that they didn't finish up and they're getting all the XP from those programs. Maybe that's how they're doing it. Strike 
strike three, sit down. Maybe. What you got? I don't know. I've never, I've never liked his swing other than the the gold card that you got in MLB the Show 21. But I have not liked his card ever since. What the heck was that? That that the the stadium music for the Astros when they get a strikeout? Ah. Okay. We talked about the picture. Maybe that's why I never really pushed for Todd Helton or Andy Pettit. Ugh. Darn it. So I gotta put in... I gotta keep uh, you Darvish in. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Didn't want to keep him in. I wanted to take him out. I only want to do that if I have a lead. I don't have a lead. I want to make sure I get the win or give an opportunity for Darvish or the starting pitcher to be able to get that win. You know, strike three, sit out. I know. That's why I'm willing to... That's also part of the reason why I'm willing to keep um, Darvish in there. But strikeouts I could easily get by playing a play versus CPU game. I average like 20, around 20 a game. So if I do like five of those, I'll have that, or I, it's 50 strikeouts, right? Yeah, 50. So you do like two of those, you'll you'll be you'll be close to done. Strike three, sit down. But I've just been using you Darvish so much that uh, he's probably already got some strikeouts. Hold on, I need to see what we're. Yeah, let's go lefty. So we'll warm up books rarely. Hold on. Actually, we'll sit. Sit Martin down, put in Bummer. Wow. Okay, there you go. I didn't... I thought he had less, but maybe I'm thinking of Joe Morgan. Yeah, I think I was thinking of Joe Morgan. So, sorry, Palmero, that I confused you for Joe Morgan. So I guess I'm going to have to go to extras. Ugh. Run. Get over that wall. Get over, get over, get over. Yes! Barry Larkin coming through much. Oh, wow. Wow, Barry Larkin. Way to come through. 
Holy cow. All right, bring in Brooks Raley. Let's get this saved. And we'll finish up the map and then that'll be that. What a play by Craig Biggio. Second moment trailing by three with runner. Oh, you. Why would they not start with that moment first? Ball, that's down. No well, I mean, Soto is going to be pumping gas, no doubt. But, uh, you know, he's going to tire. Strike three, sit down. And there we go. Nice. And he goes, Shioka manages to get up to tier tier one. Just thinks that I'm not gonna get all the missions done. I don't know why the uh, Padres one didn't get. Think I don't know why the Padres and Bru and Braves one didn't count. But uh, that's rather frustrating. So I'll have to do this conquest map again at some point. What? Never mind. Apparently, when they mean strongholds, I guess that means that it has to be all their territory. Which doesn't make any sense to me at all. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. So thank you to everyone who tuned in. Even if it was only for a moment, I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow me here on Twitch and or subscribe. Either one would make me a happy person. If you're watching this on YouTube, I thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you like the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to know when I go live, you can follow me on X at ttvnextjgjan24. It's my gamer tag that's in the upper left there. So go give me a follow. I'll usually post whenever I go live. You can also turn on notifications here on Twitch. That way Twitch sends you an email every time I start up a stream. I'm glad I was able to get the wild card uh, conquest map done. And we were able to make some progress. Not, not a lot of progress, but we made some progress in the um, Team Affinity programs. The next time that you see me will be on Sunday. I will be grinding the Ranked Seasons program uh, since it sounds like the second stat missions came out. So we're going to be grinding that. Uh, so I hope to see you then. Until then, guys, have a good night and enjoy your weekend. See ya.